Okay, today we're going to talk about radical expressions and functions. This is section 7.1. Please make sure you're taking clear notes so I can check those and give you some points for those. Um, the first thing we're going to talk about is square roots. And you all know C is a square root of A if C squared equals A. And that's how you would solve for C in this case. To undo the squared, you would square root both sides. So first question says find the square roots, and I'll just abbreviate that square roots, of 36. Well, what squared is 36? Well, you know 6 squared is 36. And you should know one other number, and that is negative 6, because negative 6 times negative 6 is 36. So 6 squared equals 36, and the quantity negative 6 squared equals 36. So those are the square roots of 36. Now we have what's called the principal square root, and that is when you're actually just taking the square root of something or that's also called a radical and that number is positive so the difference is if I have say the square root of 36 that answer is just positive 6 that's called the principal square root but if I have x squared equals 36 to undo this squared sign I have to square root both sides and the square root and the squared cancel each other and it actually leaves you plus or minus x equals whoops 6 so if plus or minus x equals 6 then x equals plus or minus 6 and that's where you get the positive and the negative so this is a big difference if you're actually taking the square root alone your answer is just positive but if you are doing a plus or minus then your answer, or if you're actually squaring something and square rooting to undo that, your answer is plus or minus 6. So here are a few to try. Square root of 25. Square root of 25 over 64. Negative square root of 64. and square root of 0 0.049. So if you go, take a moment, write these down, and work these out, and push pause, and come back to me. So you should have gotten 5. Here you can square root 25 over square root 64, which is 5 eighths. Square root of 64 is 8, and then we make it negative as negative 8. And the square root of 0 0.049 is 0 0.7. Okay, next thing I'm going to ask you to do is find f of, whoops, f of 1 when f of x equals negative square root of 3x minus 2. And I know I'm going fast, but this is where you get to push pause. So what do we do with this f of 1? We plug it in place of x. So we have negative square root of 3 times 1 minus 2. 3 times 1 is 3 minus 2. 3 minus 2 is 1. So we have negative square root of 1. Square root of 1 is 1. And then we make that negative, so that's negative 1. Okay. So here's a rule. When we have the square root of a squared, this is like what the principal square root says. It actually equals the absolute value of a. It's a positive value. So, whoops, I'm on number 6. So if I have the square root of 5 squared, that equals 5. And the square root of the quantity negative 6 squared Negative 6 squared is 36, and we square root 36, and we get positive 6. So think about that for a moment. Okay, so 
Oops. Let's try some. And we are just simplifying here. So we have the square root of the quantity x plus 1 squared. And the square root of x squared minus 8x plus 16. So now we have the square root of x plus 1 squared. So we are undoing the square root with the squaring and we're left with x plus 1. Here you should recognize this trinomial and this yes can be factored. So and it's a perfect square trinomial so this turns into the quantity x we can square root the front is x, square root the back is 6, um, square root of 16 is 4, sine in the middle is no sub minus, excuse my mistakes, and the square root of x minus 4 squared, which is then x minus 4. Okay, so if I have the square root of t to the 6th, squaring, square rooting a sixth makes it a third and here we have to put the absolute value bars on because this cubed number could be negative. If you cube a negative you come out with a negative. If you cube a positive you get a positive. Where in this case when anytime you square a number it does not matter. Any number squared is always positive but that's not true with cubes or odd roots. So with that same justification the square root of a to the eighth is a to the fourth and that is not you do not have to have the absolute value there. So here's another rule c cubed equals a. What does a what does c equal? How do you undo both sides? Well you cube root both sides and that does take care of undoing the cubing. Okay, let's see. Number 12. Find f of 125 if f of x equals cube root of x. So, again, we plug 125 in for x. Cube root of 125 is 5, you should be saying. Let's do another one. f of negative 26. So you have f of x equals cube root of x minus 1. So let's plug negative 26 minus 1 and we take the cube root of that. Negative 26 minus 1 is negative 27. Cube root of negative 27. And this cube root can be negative and it is a negative number so we get negative 3. Because negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3 equals these turn to positive, this stays negative, 27. Okay? So here's a little chart that you, oh, whoops. Here's a little chart that you need to know to make sure you get your odd and even roots correct. And this will differentiate for you. So I call it my nth roots chart. And basically, If n is even or if n is odd, and this is what's going to tell us our signs. So if n is even and a is positive, then the nth root of a is positive. And if a is negative, then the nth root of a, can you take a square, even root, like a square root of a negative number? No, we can't. It's not real. And with either of these, we end up with the absolute value. Anytime it was even, we said we have the absolute value of a. So the square root of a squared is always positive a. So here we are at odds. If odd is positive, then the cube root of a positive is positive. And if, odd, if it's negative, then the cube root of a negative is negative, just like in example 13. 
and the nth root of a to the n for an odd is always a. You don't have to have the absolute value, and that's because you could have signs one of each here. Because the signs being one of each say you don't have to have absolute value, but here the sign has to be positive, so you have to have that, because otherwise it's not real. Okay, so now I'm going to give you some problems to simplify. We are on number 14, and this is where we will start our discussion after you have simplified all of these. So we have the cube root of negative 8y cubed. We have the fifth root of 32. I'll leave this up for just a minute after I'm finished writing it all. So you can get it all copied. Again, all of this must be in your notes. Let's see. And a lot of these might look similar, and they might even have the same answers. But this is what you need to look at. Take a moment, get these copied. And I will be walking around checking for your answers here. Be sure to ask me questions if you have them.